Welcome guys to my channel. Today I wanna share my five or maybe even more biggest lessons that I learned at the Bali Bloom Festival. I'm gonna try this on. Oh yeah! So the whole festival was was about a lot of different things. It was also a lot about like tantric, but it's, it was a, a lot about like spiritual, biohacking, more like tech things. And it was just a big mix. The first takeaway that I learned is that everything is energy and we attract what we are. By the intention you set for the day, the universe will line up so you will get what you want, but you have to be in the moment all the time kind of like when you're not thinking about it it's gonna come and I, I experienced this many times throughout the weekend where I kind of like tested myself and I set an intention I let it go and I just allow it to happen it just like instantly worked. this thing will instantly work in your life if you can allow yourself to switch the mindset from like thinking about it to something else that you're grateful for or you're going to do something that you're completely busy with something else. Just trust that whatever that is will come to you in the best way it can as soon as it can. Yeah, so an example for this could be that I was at the last day, I was tired and I wanted to sit down but I wanted to have a nice conversation with someone. So I sat myself down and I set the intention, I spoke out straight away, I want someone to uh, have a nice conversation with, like a nice deep conversation. And then I let it go, wasn't thinking about it, I'm not shitting you. 30 seconds later, a girl comes up to me, hey, how's it going? Uh, what's your name? What are you doing? Uh, and then she sat down next to me and we had a nice conversation And that's just an example of what actually can happen where it's like it comes straight away But if I was in my mind and I was thinking about oh, I want someone to talk to I want someone to talk to I want someone to talk to it's not gonna come The second thing is that the intentions very 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 important to set intentions for the day for the week for the month for the year and when we set these intentions they will come to you just as we spoke about and you will either attract that consciously you choose or if you don't choose you will choose anyway subconsciously and it will it will be something that you probably don't want to have so by consciously meditating every morning setting the intention of the day or what you want or maybe for the week or the next day it's the key thing how you kind of create reality that you want to have and the more clear you are on your intention the better life can serve it to you. So I have a, a, another example, which I came to a tea house and I said, I want someone to cuddle with. I want someone to cuddle with. I didn't say I want a hot Russian girl or an ugly Swedish girl. I said someone. So universe, okay, he wants someone. And I kid you not, 30 seconds later or something like that, maybe a minute, and a girl comes, sits next to me, she started to be like being playful with me and she started to uh, joke around and I started to joke around with her. Unfortunately, it was not for my taste. Uh, not what I wanted. I said no. 30 minutes later, she was in bed and hugging with someone else. So it went really fast. The manifestation worked. But that is how quick it actually can go. Magic. Do you believe in magic? Do you believe that anything can happen? Do you believe that you can, uh, even if you don't have, but like let's say you want to buy a house, you don't have the money, and do you believe that the money will be there when you need it, if you really trust? Anything can happen. We just got to put it in our mind. We got to believe, we got to trust, uh, we got to see it happen, we got to know it happen from within, and then we got to go for it. We gotta face whatever we are going through. Really believe that it's going to happen. I believe in magic. I believe that literally anything can happen. But I honestly been thinking too small. I need to think bigger. Trust it. Go with it. Believe it. But life will bring you the things you want. And if you don't want, if you're not clear on what you want, if you're not clear on the vision, if you're not clear on that your life is gonna be amazing, well, that's what you're gonna get. Your beliefs create your reality. So if you have a belief that you do not deserve to have it or like none of you or your family or anyone around you have had it before, so you're not gonna get it either. A belief that I had that only um, 
a few people are destined for wealth, also shit belief. Money doesn't grow on tree, or like money is not enough for everyone, or they could be like stuff like that. Thought patterns are running and contro like controlling, creating our outer circumstances. And when we let go of shit, there is a space for more stuff to come into your mind and therefore a new reality can be created. And then we're gonna jump in some tantric stuff because coming from trauma, coming from a lot of like, and when it comes to sex, there is one way to look at sex in the, in the collective people, often uh, porn and stuff, shit like that, really determine how people see, look at sex. But when you come into the ta tantric space, it's completely different. I believe that like tantric was some weird woo woo shit, but now I just realized that tantric is connecting with self and another person on a deeper level. Uh, it's not any strange things at all, actually. Tantric, I love tantric stuff, but I've been scared of like sitting next to someone random and, and say things to that person, or so it's just been my own fears. The feminine, and that could be a guy or a girl, it doesn't matter, but the feminine energy wants to be observed, wants to, wants for you, if you're more masculine, to enjoy her or his body. Like when you enjoy watching the other person, your partner, your lover, your friend, when you look at boobs, when you look at ass, when you look at stomach, when you look at legs, when you look into their eyes, you connect with them, you keep a present, you're present with them, and you're just like, oh shit, you are so tasty. When you do that, and they feel that, when, that you really mean it, the feminine wants to give more. If they dance in front of you, and you're like, oh shh, you are so sexy, I can't, oh my god, like you are, you really enjoy, and you really receive they want to give even more. So I had this session with this beautiful girl in front of me. We were talking to each other, what we liked about the other person, and then she was supposed to dance in front of me, and then I danced in front of her. And what happened was that when I really dropped in and like, oh, this she's so beautiful, and I really enjoyed watching her, that's where it switched for her. And that's where she felt that she could express herself even more. Society has been telling me at least that it's dirty, that it's bad. Don't look at girls' boobs and ass and like don't sexualize them or they want to be observed. They want to be, they want to be seen for who they are. Dirty talk. When I first heard dirty talk, I was like, shit, are we gonna like say things that like, oh, I wanna have sex with you in a strange position or that you know what I mean but no dirty talk what I experienced and what I took from it and how important and also not just important because important is boring but like how sexy it actually can be is when you speak your wants your needs and your desires for the other person so you speak what you want to do with the other person in their like in their ear. You're like, you know what? You're so sexy to look at. And then you maybe see, uh, maybe say, oh, I want to do this and this because, or I like when you how you dance, or I I appreciate this behavior, this thing you do. I appreciate how you are. Because when you talk about them and their behavior, what they're doing, how they look, who they are, they're gonna be like, oh shit, I, they're gonna feel that. Uh, and I have, it's, so it's not about like saying, uh, um, oh I wanna jiggy jiggy with you, uh, at the, yeah it can be that too, but what I really took from it was the, when you speak the needs, the wants, the desires, of that other person, your stuff to the other person. And then boundaries. Boundaries was one of the things that we practiced a lot of a lot of times. And setting clear boundaries of what you want, what you don't want, what is okay for you, what is not okay for you, is one like, and we should do this in all life, but also when it comes to a partner, and say, yeah, I'm okay to do this thing, but I'm not okay to, to, to do that. Both come in agreement with what you're okay with, it just, when you just have that conversation with someone, 
it feels you're like oh uh, there's nothing that I need to hide there's nothing that, that I don't need to talk talk about or like there's no judgment there is no uh, anticipations it's just open and fluid between you and the other person what you really want to do may be expressed and safe so when it feels safe to express and for the other to receive that they can say no actually I don't feel like that I would rather not do it and then you're like okay sure let's go so do something else for me it's been a big thing to be able to speak and set these boundaries and be able to like say what I really want, what I don't want, setting my boundaries strict and now more than ever I set them really tight. I really knew what I wanted but I got it when I had the experience with someone else and they were all random people by the way and everyone was just accepting. How beautiful isn't this? How many of you haven't gone to like a date and you can feel the tension between the other one that you don't know, can I say this, can I not say this, or like, uh, maybe this a person is offended and then all of a sudden they're happy and then they're sad and they're like, emotionally unstable. No, it doesn't feel safe, right? Safetyness is the key when it comes to this. And for me, like high sensitive person as I am, yeah, very, 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 very important. And the last thing that, that it's something that I really saw this event, like deep connection with other people, and the deep connection with other people I create when I feel, yes, as I said, when I feel safe to express my heart to another person, that's where the real deep connection comes. Loneliness and being lonely is two different things, right? Yeah, so being lonely, that's what I am now. I'm alone here. There's no one else here. But loneliness is, and this is from my own experience, loneliness is when you feel that you cannot express yourself to the people around you. So if you are with other people in your life, maybe you're at the festival, and you feel that you cannot talk to people, that is loneliness. But being alone and with yourself is something completely different. So deep connection, guys, is created by you speaking your inner voice, your wants, your needs, your desires, and your truth to someone that is willing to accept, listen, and understand, and just be there. And the more you do this, the better it feels. Sometimes I've been so lonely, and I felt that I couldn't, like, I was, I was traveling the world, and I was like, I couldn't really talk to anyone, it, it, because I was in my mind. I couldn't really communicate. I was afraid of the reaction from people even on the street, I was like, hey, I've been shit scared, believe it or not. Okay, cool. Comment down below. Please subscribe. I appreciate you for, uh, for being here. And I will see you in the next one.